Today, we're going to continue our study on the deity of Christ. It is my joy to uh, read these scriptures because it exalts the Lord. The scriptures were pointing to his divine power. It exalts him. It lifts him up. And that, my beloved, draws unbelievers. When you find someone that's full of the word of the Lord and the humility that comes as a result of being under submission to Christ, that draws the unbelievers because they cannot understand that you don't find your your rest or your satisfactions and things and stuff and experiences, but that you have your hopes set on the end of the day, the eternal uh, gift of eternal life. So today, as, as we look through these scriptures, I pray that God would build you up and that you would know that you know that you know that you know, no, know, know that Jesus is God. The Word became flesh, the Bible says, and that you would hold that near and dear to your heart. Because most people will discuss faith, comparative religions in school. My daughters went through that. One of them's going through it right now. And when it comes down to where the rubber meets the road is... Is Jesus God? Yes or no? And if you cannot say yes, then you're in big trouble. So right out of the gate, one of the most famous passages that we have available to us is in John 1.1. 1, 1, the eternal word. The scripture teaches us, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. But it doesn't stop there. That passage continues. It goes on. To St. John chapter 1, verse 14, it says the Word be- becomes flesh. Now think about that. The eternal God came from heaven, wrapped himself in flesh, left all of his glory with mission in mind. Do you have a mission? Is your life driven by it? Is your life led by it, rather? There's a big difference between being driven and being Holy Spirit led. Being driven is usually by the desires of your flesh. But being Holy Spirit led by the scripture is where we need to be. Because most people, some people get passionate about sports. Some people get passionate about work. Some people get passionate about education. It's good to have those things. It's good to have um, desire to, to do well and to all those things. But in the kingdom, the child of God is declared a child of God because he's Holy Spirit led. I had a very famous man tell me, Scott, never let soul winners be driven by you. I said, sir, he goes, any organization that's driven will soon fail. He said, because the minute you lose your passion, every, the wind goes out of the sails. And the other thing, he said, he said, where you focus is where the resources will go. He said, so you must be led by the Holy Spirit from direct from the Word of God. Every organization has to be there if it's under Christ. Right? And this man was speaking from failure. He made some terrible mistakes in a giant organization. And so what he said never left me, and I thought, wow, it it really is critical that that we together as as a community of believers on earth have to be led gently by the Holy Spirit's understanding given that's given to us. And there's no other way to get it except to understand the Word. Because the Bible says that Satan comes to steal. Steal what? He'll steal the understanding, the word of the Lord from your heart if you don't understand it, the Bible says in Matthew 13. So it's one thing to hear it. It's another thing to understand. You have to pray, Lord, let me not just hear it, but move me and grant me understanding that I might be moved to obey it. Because it's not just hearing it. There's plenty of hearers. There's a very few number that stay on the narrow path. The Bible says the harvest is plenty, but the, the workers are few, Luke 10.2. So we want to be amongst that number that are not working for our salvation, but because of what Christ has done for us, we, we hold our, uh, his, his desires 
as a treasure and we labor to bring joy to his heart. That's the difference. Those that are led have the joy of Jesus Christ on their minds. Is this going to bring joy to Jesus? Not, is it going to satisfy my to-do list? My self-created to-do list. So there's a big difference between being driven and being led. You want to be led out of a desire to please the Master and for no other reason. Amen. Amen? Everything else is duty. But when it becomes that your participation is, 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 is like drawing you out of a well and then applying you with the partnership of the Holy Spirit, Amen. as it is written in Galatians 2.20, I no longer live, right? But Christ lives where? Through me. He's living through us. And so that, that submission to Jesus Christ has to be intentional. And that's, that's what you see if you study the life of Christ and His relationship with the Father. I call it the God-to-God relationship. It's, it culminates in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Beautiful passage. Read it when you get a chance. So He came to earth, and the Bible says there's a couple very special characteristics about Jesus. Well, in order for you to understand those characteristics, you have to read 1 John 5, 7 to grasp it. It says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, For there are three that bear record, or bear witness, in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. What does it say? And these, say it with me, these three are one. What do you see? The triunity of one God. Not three gods, but there's the triunity of our God. One God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. True or not true? True. True. So we just read in in St. John 1.14 that this word that that was in the beginning and was with God was God. You see it? But the beauty of it is out of the Holy Trinity, I mentioned this two weeks ago, He, Jesus, is the only one that came to earth and wrapped himself in flesh. The Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us, but he doesn't wrap himself in flesh. Right? The Father doesn't come to earth and live inside of us unless the believer wholeheartedly submits to Christ. Look at St. John chapter 14, verse 23. In this passage of Scripture, it says, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Point. He will keep it. What does that word keep mean? Tend. He will tend to it. He will participate with it. He will obey it. It says, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him. Now listen real close. And we will come to him and make our home with him. There it is. The fullness of the Godhead decides to live in those who fully submit and who keep his word. Beautiful, huh? Amen. So, when we understand the, 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 the declaration about the Holy Godhead and the triunity of the Godhead, we, can, we're, we, can, we, we see the power in all three Divine, distinct, yet separate, uh, yet not separate, of the Holy Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. These three are one. So next, we we need to understand, as it's written in Matthew chapter twenty-eight, verse eighteen, a transfer of power. How what an appropriate phrase in the month of January, huh? A transfer. Of power. Here in Matthew chapter 28, I'm referring to the election. Okay, I I seen a whole lot of people get puzzled looks up there. I'm referring to Jan 20. It says January 28, (laughs) January 28. Boy, boy, mark that down. You better write that date down. There might be something happening on January 28. But in Matthew 28, 18, it says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority 
has been given to me, where? Heaven. In heaven and earth. on earth. Supreme authority. Supreme authority. Now, I don't think you can go too far without the need to read Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 through 19. Go there with me if you would. Now, what is it? This, this Colossian passage, it points to the necessity of Jesus having supremacy in your life. Colossians chapter 1. I should have printed it, but I I forgot this. Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 15. Now, the reason I'm pointing to this is because we're coming just off of Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And when you hear that, and then you read Colossians 1, 15 through 19, there should be an eye-opening experience. And it points to the divine character as creator. Jesus as creator. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but there is no one above our creator. The connection that you have to land on is that Jesus was in creation, and all things were made by him, and, and through Him, and all things are held together for Him, amen, and by Him. But listen closely, I want you to hear it word for word straight from the Scripture. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven. That means heaven's under His feet. Catch that. That means he was before heaven. Hello? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Look at the eternal word. Before heaven. Critical, Critical teaching here. Let me tell you why. A lot of people are mistaken when they think Jesus is a part of creation. I beg to differ. The scripture teaches he is above it. All things are below him. It's critical to know that. It says, He is the image of the invisible God, firstborn over all creation, for by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things, say it with me, all things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and in Him all things... Not some, but all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have what? Preeminence. Preeminence. Do you see, does that give us a aha moment? Where does Jesus where is he in your life? Is every decision run through the filter that he Created me for his purpose. See, in the kingdom, there's two kinds of folk. Givers and takers. We want to be the ones that are giving to God. Right? Giving our thoughts toward him. Giving our worship to him. Giving our time to him. Presenting our obedience to him. Right? You see the mindset? You won't go there. You won't live there. Unless the preeminence of His divine authority and His mercy shown to you is at the highest level inside of you. Everything to His glory. Amen. Everything to Him and everything to His glory. That is the mindset of a kingdom disciple. Is I'm living for His joy. I'm living for His pleasure. Let it be to the glory of God that I breathe. Let it be to the glory of God that I, that I serve. Let it be to His joy 
that I labor. That's where we have to land. If he if he's any other place, then there needs to be a critical adjustment ASAP. Now, I want you to understand that one thing that is distinct about Jesus is on earth, he received worship. And only God should receive worship. Right? Yes. Do you see that? Here in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6, it says, But when he again brings forth the firstborn into the world, he says, now this is the, the utterance of the Father being recorded for our sake. But when he again brings, brings the firstborn into the world, what's that firstborn re- referring to? Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. Hello? Yes. Are you catching that? We definitely are his children. If you're in Christ, you've been adopted into the family of God. But Jesus is the only firstborn, right? Now, have we received birth from the Father? Yes. By His Spirit? Yes. Through regeneration? Yes. Jesus taught about it. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, you must be born again before you may enter the kingdom of God. Yes? What's He referring to? He's referring to, He's coming from the declaration in St. John chapter 1, verse 12. Turn there with me. See, it's that seed, the seed of God that is deposited in his children. And because of that birth, that second birth, we become children of God. And therefore we rejoice. In St. John chapter 1, look there with me please. I'm going to read from 10 down. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Where do we hear that? Do you see the repetition out of the Gospel of John? Straight, if you put them side by side, it's almost word for word. In Colossians chapter 1, 15 through 19, right? Remember that? So here it is again in the Gospel of John. It says, he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not, what? Know him. him. The word know here means to be one with. To be one with. Now where does that, where do you find that also in Scripture? Hold your place, turn over to St. John 17, 1 through 3. You'll see it for yourself. Very famous passage. In St. John chapter 17, beginning in verse 1, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh. Where did you hear that? Do you see it? Matthew 28, 18. Here, in the Gospel of John, it's in red print. Do you see that? In other words, what was known about Jesus was uttered through the Gospel of Matthew. Here, it's coming direct from the mouth of Christ. It says, As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you. Know you. That they may be one with you. I mean, I, I could take you all through the New Testament, but the one verse that came to my heart as I was reading this is the, is the St. John 17 prayer. Father, I pray that they all may be one as we are one, right? Yes. One, the, the unity. His children in Him, Him and His children. With me so far? It's a critical doctrine. So, we learn here that through the declaration of His deity 
in demonstration. Hebrews 1 6, what does it teach us? It says, But when he when he again brings forth the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. But I I did not read John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. If you'll flip back there with me, please. It says, He was in the world, the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. I left off in verse 10, but go back to verse 11 with me that we can finish this. It says, He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them... Boy, look at the emphasis on on receiving. Jesus is a gift. The gift is of no value to the one who rejects it. Does the value of the gift change? No. Does the impact of the gift change? Yes. Because it the gift was given and the impact of it was meant for the person that was going to receive it. Right? If you never receive it, the impact on you is definitely not going to happen. So that's that's the reason we must receive him. We must receive Christ. We must accept his word. You see, that's, what, that's the essence of the reception, is that you, you accept his word. How else then shall we receive him if we do not accept him and the words that he spoke to us? You have to accept the word of the Lord. It says here, but as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. There it is. So, do you see, right here is is a beautiful image of birth by the Spirit. This seed is from heaven. That, That seed is what makes you and I new creation. We're a new creation. It also brings forth the death to the sinful nature and the rise of the new creation nurtured by the deposit of the Holy Spirit. Thus, we walk with Him. Thus, we talk with Him. And thus, He speaks and we obey His Word. That's the kingdom relationship. It's not sourced by your desires only. It's sourced by the Spirit of God living inside of you that came from the seed of God. And when you, we have been equipped with all manner of heavenly blessing to walk as Jesus walked. 1 John chapter 3. Tracking me so far. So as we move down here in our lesson, in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 10 through 12, it says, You, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the works of your hand. Divine character revealed here? Creator, right? The creator's revealed in this verse. Two verses. Now, look at, look at Hebrews 11. It says, They will perish, but you will remain. And they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up. And, and they will be changed. But you are the same. And all and your years would not fail. Divine character revealed here, eternal. No beginning, no end. God is. He said, did he not say, I am? Before Abraham was, I am? Is that not an eternal revelation? Yes, it is. It sure is. So, going to Luke chapter 10, verse 22, on the inside of the second page, it says, All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son. Now listen real closely to Luke 20, 10, 22b. Let, let's catch it. It says, and the, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal Him. What did Peter say? What did Jesus say to Peter? What you just spoke was not from earth. 
but it has been revealed to you from heaven. Do you realize what's in your hand? A revelation of Jesus Christ. A beautiful account of His life, of His ministry, of His power, of His plans as the Son of God manifested on earth, as Creator God coming to earth, as Savior God coming to the cross, as risen Lord at Calvary, and out of the grave He rose. Amen? Amen. Boy, this is rich. When you, when, you look at, when you look at it in a holistic view, the 50 scriptures or so that I've, got, I've gotten here is probably a 25% of the deity scriptures available. It says here in, in, in Hebrews chapter 13, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What does that point to? He doesn't change. He doesn't change. But thank God we do. There's a work of transformation going on here. There's a work of sanctification going on here. Thank God that you weren't what you, weren't what you were yesterday. And that God is sanctifying you each and every day, transforming us into the very likeness of Christ on earth. Thank the Lord. He's immutable. Yes. He does not change. In Acts chapter 7, verse 59, and it says, Now, I want you to think about Stephen here. And who he called on at the moment of his death. Think about it. It says, and they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, now catch the connection. He's calling on God, but he said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. What, did, what kind of revelation did Stephen have? That God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are one. And his closest contact was through the Son. He knew Jesus firsthand. He knew He was the Messiah. He knew He was God on earth. And He was putting His trust in who? In Jesus. He knew Him as Savior. And He knew even though He died, He would live. Do you know that today? Is that in your heart? If someone held a gun to your head, would you be able to announce that? That's where we've got to be, church. That's where the church has got to be. Come what may, Jesus is Lord, God, heaven's maker, star breather, universe maker. He is all in all a part of the Holy Trinity. Our God is one. It says here in, in John, uh, 28, or John 20, verse 28. Now, Thomas died in India. Isn't that correct? Yes. He, did what? he died in India. He was pierced. He was pierced. It, what, what's the name of the city, brother? I think it's, is it Chennai? Somewhere near Chennai. Yeah. yeah. It, he died in Chennai, India. And he was pierced to death. There's a place, a memorial <laughs> there. Listen closely to John twenty twenty-eight, And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord... And my God. So we have a first-hand witness that Stephen looked to Jesus as God, correct? We have Thomas who put his hands, uh, who touched Jesus' hands and recognized that he had appeared to him, but with the piercings still in his body after the resurrection. That means Jesus rose from the dead. And the markings of his unbelievable crucifixion were still there. And he appeared to Thomas. And then Thomas, doubting Thomas, believed. May it, may, may it not take that much for us. Huh? Yes. But look at the willingness of Jesus to even go to that extent. To appear in his presence and challenge him. He challenged Thomas. And Thomas realized whom, whom he had been doubting then, didn't he? What did he say? He said, um, 
my Lord and my God. Divine character revealed. Jesus displayed his power over death. Jesus was in fact raised from the dead. And that same promise is to you and to I. Even though we die, we shall live. All those, St. John chapter 5, verse 28, 29, all those that live shall hear his voice and come out. Those that have done good to the resurrection of the righteous, those that have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. But we thank God that that promise is given to us and that because of the sin debt payment through Christ, our sins have been forgiven. I thank Jesus for paying my sin debt. Anybody else? Oh, yes. Amen. Thank Woo! You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Romans chapter 9, verse 5, it says, Of whom are the fathers, and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came? Who is over all? The eternal... Etern- Pardon me, the eternal, eternally blessed of God. I'm out of time, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to take these two scriptures on this one page and finish it. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 6, it says, Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Now think, all of his glory that he had in heaven, he left. And on his way out, he said, Father, glorify your son. Right? He knew where he was going. He was going straight back to heaven to, to, to take his rightful seat as the eternal high priest. That same Jesus is interceding for you and I right now. He's not done. He's not done. He is going to pray the church straight home. And he can come in any minute. Tonight, tomorrow, two seconds from now, 200 years from now, Jesus is Lord, He is God, and He is coming quickly, as Revelation reveals. And it says in Titus chapter 2, verse 13, it says, Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't know if any of us will be alive when he splits the skies open. I hope we're all alive when we see that glory coming down from heaven. But whether you are alive at that moment and escape death in the grave, or if, you're, or if you pass on and, and, and Jesus is still tearing, you still are going to hear his voice and come out. And, and God is going to glorify us by giving us a brand new body and and an eternal welcome into the kingdom of God because we've been bought with a price and God said, I'm not going to lose one of all that the Father had given me and no one could snatch you from my Father. For my Father is greater than all, St. John 10, 28 and 29. All glory to God. Thanks for letting me share.